Hello, 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 you amazing hackers. Have you ever wanted to make your attacking server work for you instead of against you? Well, today we're going to learn what server-side request forgery is and how you can abuse it. So let's get right into it, shall we? First of all, there are two kinds of uh, server-side request forgery that we need to consider. Um, we have our normal server-side request forgery and our blind server-side request forgery. Um, the blind type is something that we'll discuss more in depth in a different video because first of all we need to talk about what we actually mean when we say server-side request forgery. So let's get right into it, shall we? Um, now in a typical server-side request forgery attack, you're going to have a web server uh, and you're going to, or any other server for that matter, and you're going to make that server make a request in its own name. So you're making going to forge a request in the name of the server. So what that means in practice, we'll talk about a little bit later, but you basically have two options there. You can make the server leverage some internal network component, so you can make it talk to some internal system, um, or you can make it talk to itself, like to its loopback address, because some functionality might only be accessible on loopback addresses or from internal networks you can use server-side request forgery to do that stuff for you. So I would suggest that we go into the Burp Labs, basic server-side request forgery against the local server. Now, if we go back to the lab description real quick, we can see a few things. First of all, the lab has a stock check feature which fetches data from the internal system. And to solve the lab, change the stock check URL uh, to access the admin interface and delete the user Carlos. So pretty easy, should all be doable. First of all, we'll view the product details because we know that the check stock functionality is in here and let's execute it, shall we? We can see that some calls have been made to check out which ones exactly will go to the network tab here and clear everything real quick. And then we'll do another check stock so we can see which calls have been made exactly. And we can see that our request URL was slash product slash stock, which is to be expected. But then when we look into the request, we can see that the body contains a parameter called stock API. And now this stock API is a parameter that we can change. First of all, it would be uh, maybe wise to show you guys what the admin panel actually is. So as you guys see from my URL, I can just type slash admin to go to the administration panel. But when I do that, I get this error message admin interface only available if logged in as administrator or if requested from loopback. So it's not always safe to just make your administrative panels only available from loopback as you'll see in a second here. What we'll do is we'll go to the code of this specific form and we'll check out what's behind it. Now we can see a few select uh, options here. So when we look at one of these options, we can see that one of the values is a URL to that specific product, uh, to the stock API. Now what we'll do for server-side request forgery is we'll have to make the server think that um, we want to access the administration panel and that the request was called from a loopback address. Now in our case, that would be the uh, web server so we have a server running here, we'll send it to local host and we want to request the administration panel. <coughs> so when we check the stock now for this specific one, you can see that we actually get the administration panel. There we go. And in this administration panel, we see that we can delete a user. Now to delete the user again, I'm going to inspect the element. You're going to see a URL. But this URL won't work directly because I need to call it from the loopback address again. Now to do that, I'll just repeat my same actions. Sorry, by the way, for those pop-ups. Now I'll repeat my same actions. Only thing I'll do different this time is I'll just add my delete user part there. So there we go. And now when I execute this request, the web server is going to make a request to localhost, so to itself, from the loopback address to the admin page and it's going to call the delete function for username Carlos. So when I do that, you guys should be able to see that my labs have been solved. Uh, in this case, they haven't been because I'm not logged in, but my user Carlos was uh, deleted in this case because the request was called 
from the Lubeck address to the administration panel. So that's it for server-side request for, the, for what we have now. Later on we'll also move on to some more advanced techniques like uh, making a callback to another uh, host in the network and we'll also do blind SSRF. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!